Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. It is Thursday, May 19th, and we're here today with a, uh, an impressive group of law enforcement professionals to share with you the work that they have done uh, collegially across the federal government uh, and, and the state government and the county government uh, to protect us uh, with the expansion of drug usage and overdose that's uh, occurring right now in our society. I'm joined by our Commissioner Sheriff of the Westchester County Department of Public Safety, Tom Gleason. Also with us is uh, Chief Inspector John Hodges of our county DPS, and we have with us here today uh, representatives from the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, from the FBI Criminal Division, and from the Homeland Security Investigations New York Field Office, all of whom federal law enforcement officials represented here uh, at the dais by uh, Michael Brodak, who's a special agent in charge, FBI, New York Criminal Division, Frank Tarantino III, special agent in charge of the Drug Enforcement Administration, New York Division, and Ricky Patel, acting special agent in charge of Homeland Security Investigations of the New York Field Office, and then other individuals from those agencies with us today. The increased use of fentanyl and fentanyl-laced narcotics has had deadly consequences for residents in Westchester County and, and across New York State and across the nation. Overdoses have been rising, and a multifaceted approach was needed to respond. And for those of us in the general government, we look to the professionals of law enforcement to outline exactly how that coordinated effort can work and the kind of results that it can result from. Those of us who are civilians uh, look to see uh, safety as we come and go, and we hear stories of violent crimes, uh, and, and violent actions that are taken by those people that are either trying to obtain drugs or on drugs, and those that are in overdose situations where loss of life occurs. This coordination is impressive, and it represents the best way that law enforcement shows that it can work professionally to make us safer. I'd like our commissioner, uh, sheriff of public safety, Tom Gleason, to sort of lay out the basics of it, and then uh, we'll have John Hodges, chief inspector, also one of the leaders of our department, uh, explain how the uh, interaction goes. Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Beginning in June of 2020, in response to the opioid epidemic and rising number of overdose deaths, Westchester County Police launched a narcotics reduction program and targeted large-scale suppliers of fentanyl and other illegal narcotics. While our officers and detectives from patrol services, the narcotics unit, and real-time crime work regularly with our local partners, state partners, and our district attorney's office, we don't often have the opportunity to emphasize the great support we receive from our federal law enforcement partners. Many times these investigations morph into federal investigations for various reasons. Uh, trafficking um, uh, across state lines and things of that nature. And they go on for protracted periods of time as investigators try to work their way up the food chain to the highest level suppliers of these dangerous drugs and weapons. But our goal remains the same, to interdict and intercept these products before they reach the streets of our county. So today we wish to especially thank our partners from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and the Department of Homeland Security, as well as the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District of New York. In collaboration with the Multi-Agency Real-Time Crime Center and utilizing precision policing strategies, the Narcotics Reduction Program has led to the seizure of significant quantities of fentanyl and fentanyl-laced pills and cocaine. Several dozen suspects have been charged by federal prosecutors with significant drug trafficking crimes. Since June of 2020, these cases have led to the seizure of 453,422 bags of fentanyl packaged for individual sale, 94 kilograms of fentanyl packaged in bulk, 863 fentanyl pressed pills disguised as real prescription medication, 66 kilos of cocaine, 41 vehicles equipped with aftermarket hidden compartments, and 27 firearms. For us at the county level, the support of the county executive and his team, as well as the Board of Legislators, has enabled us to maintain our staffing levels and continue to build on great crime-fighting programs such as the Real-Time Crime Center, 
which supports all local law enforcement agencies in our county. Working with our local and federal partners on investigations like these assists us greatly in keeping the people of Westchester safe. At this time, I'd like to introduce Chief John Hodges, who will give you some further details and some encouraging news regarding the overdose statistics. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, uh, County Executive. Um, as was mentioned, uh, back in 2020, um, we identified uh, an issue um, that we felt was important regarding uh, the amount of fentanyl that we were finding uh, in the county. Uh, in and of itself, um, and later in different sources, we were finding fentanyl in, in heroin and cocaine. Uh, it was pressed into pills. It was also being disguised as prescription medications. Uh, at the same time, we were seeing a precipitous rise in um, um, overdoses, overdose deaths, and the number grew quite rapidly from 2020 into 2021. So our strategy really was to reduce the supply of fentanyl into this region, and specifically into, into, into Westchester and the surrounding areas. So the strategies, as the commissioner mentioned, um, using precision policing strategies uh, by leveraging data and intelligence. Um, so detectives from various police agencies who are assigned, as well as county police detectives assigned to the real-time crime center, they partnered up with, with our federal partners who are here, uh, with the FBI, the DEA, and Homeland Security, uh, to target the trafficking of, of fentanyl. And um, the results, as the commissioner mentioned, are significant in the amount of, of seizures that have taken place. This can only be done through collaboration, sharing uh, data and information, and using a, a, a more intelligent-based police strategy, hence the precision policing. And I'm, I'm happy to say today that the, 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 the record amounts of fentanyl and the, the drugs that were seized have, have resulted in uh, basically this quarter of this year a 40% reduction in overdoses. The numbers are down uh, significantly at this point in the first quarter of, uh, of 2022, like I said, down a 40%. And, and that's what we're hoping to do on, on this side of things by reducing the, uh, the supply into the area. We hope that this trend continues and hopefully we can further reduce uh, uh, overdoses and overdose-related uh, deaths due to fentanyl, which has been just a, 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 a scourge. Thank you. We also owe a great debt of gratitude uh, to the other elements of our law enforcement uh, community. I want to thank particularly our district attorney, Mimi Roca, and her staff, uh, as we have all learned uh, as generalists, that it's both the uh, interdiction of criminals and uh, materials and the prosecution of those criminals that together represent uh, justice being done. And so the prosecutorial function at the district attorney level, at the U.S. Attorney's Office level, is, uh, is critical. And uh, the work that, that these men have led, the work that the men who are, who are with us today and women that have uh, performed so well are, are critical for us. We're joined today as well by Senator Peter Harkham, uh, who represents us in the New York State Senate. I had not originally asked him to uh, plan on saying a few words, but I would, in fact, like him to do that. Uh, the New York State Legislature and our, and our federal legislators help provide resources for the county so that when, when uh, Tom and John uh, approach us and they say we need we need this manpower we need these this piece of equipment uh, we have assistance from the state in helping to meet those goals senator thank you very much county executive it's always great to be back in the county office building and to the commissioner and chief and our federal partners i i want to thank you um for the work that you've done i i come at this um from from the demand side i chair the committee on alcoholism and, and substance abuse. And so a lot of our work uh, in the Senate is focused upon prevention, harm reduction, recovery, and, and treatment. Um, but coming from that perspective makes the work that I see that we're talking about here today so important because we see um, the precipitous spike, the, the obscene spike in overdose deaths caused by fentanyl poisoning. Um, you know, on, on the demand side, we've invested half a billion dollars this year more in OASIS, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars more in mental health 
because the young people suffering trauma today are the substance abusers tomorrow. Um, and nobody up here wants to see the old model of criminalizing people with substance use disorder. But it's the people who are, are moving fentanyl, which is a poison that is killing people. You know, decades ago, uh, I, I knew heroin users have been using heroin 20, 30 years, and they kept on living their lives. With fentanyl, there is no margin of error. Fentanyl is nothing more than a poison that's killing our kids, it's killing our parents, that is really ripping a hole in, in the fabric of our society. So for this task force to focus on the people who are moving and trafficking fentanyl is essential. And I applaud them for the work they've done. I applaud the county executive uh, for the support that he gives to all of them and to all of our law, uh, law enforcement partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, Senator Pete Harkham. Uh, a couple of things to emphasize that you heard uh, from both Commissioner Gleason and, and Chief Hodges. Uh, and, and the concept is a phrase, but behind it is something that's important for all of us to understand, and that is precision policing. That means taking the resources that are available and organizing it to a specific point of activity that can produce a result. And, and that type of work has really been amplified by the real-time crime program that Westchester County Police has been uh, engaged in. That that program has worked cooperatively with all of the police departments of Westchester County, and given the fact that New York is a home rule state, we have 40 local police departments that, along with the county police, work uh, together. And, and when you see the kind of cooperation that real-time crime generates, and now the, the, the work that the various federal agencies have coordinated, you realize just how important it is for us to appreciate each other's expertise, to be able to find areas of, of common working where it can mesh together, to effectively deal with this. We are dealing with very professional organizations who make quite a lot of profit off of moving drugs from, uh, uh, you know, from one place to another and to reach that demand that uh, Senator Harkham talked about trying to impact on the public side. And on that public side, the programs we have in mental health and education and so forth are critical, but also to try to break up that flow that brings drugs here. The numbers of, of that which has been taken off the street means that lives have sa been saved. These men have saved lives. There were individuals that might have died of a fentanyl overdose that did not because of the work that they did. And it's not often in your everyday work, and, and this is dangerous work, that we're dealing here, these men are dealing with dangerous people who are prepared to do violence in a moment's notice uh, to, uh, to protect their profit margins. Uh, so, so we, the citizens, and those of us in general government are citizens, civilians. We're not sworn officers. We haven't gone through the training they've gone through. Uh, we really appreciate the sacrifice that you show, the danger that you put yourselves in, and danger not only in the moment, but uh, when you start to disrupt these, these powerful entities, they, they intend to push back against it. So we're very fortunate, and, and let me as a county official thank again the state and the federal officials that make this possible, the respective administrations and so forth. Uh, there may be some questions from the press. If they are, they're most likely going to be technical, and I'm going to be totally unable to answer them. So I'm more than happy to turn over to Tom, John, and any of our other guests if we have any questions from the press. Lisa, okay. if, if there are any members of the press that are watching this briefing, uh, they're welcome to reach out to us through our Director of Communications, Catherine Chaffee, at 995-2932. We can connect uh, anyone that'd like to ask a question to any of these individuals. There are some things that they can't speak of and some things they can, uh, but we'll try to be as forthcoming as we can. So if there are any members of the press that would like to address us uh, outside of this, we're happy to do that to give them a full and complete story, and they're welcome to reach out to our professionals. Uh, with that, if, if any of the other members who are here wish to say anything, wish to share anything, I'm happy to open the microphone. Uh, but uh, as I am uh, quite uh, unwilling to put myself uh, in your position as law enforcement officials, many times they would just as soon let the microphone pass them by. It's not an essential part of their jobs. But if not, I want to thank uh, those of you for being in attendance today. I'd like to thank you for those of you watching. And I want to thank, for our purposes, the leadership of Tom Gleason, of uh, Terrence Rayner, of John Hodges, and uh, also our other chiefs, Chris Calabrese, now Jim Luciano. Uh, they perform a tremendous function as the leaders of this department, our Department of Public Safety, and really do, in fact, provide us with quite a bit of public safety. So, gentlemen, thank you. Thank Sorry, you. Thank, hand. You. thank you. And John, thank you very much. And thank you for watching. Uh, I'm George Latimer, County Executive. Have a good day, and uh, we'll be reporting back to you as other issues arise. Thank you. Have a good day.